welcome to lecture 28 which is on the working principle of GPS. So in this lecture uh, you will understand that how this uh, GPS receiver works when it receives the signals from the satellites. So let us begin the lecture. So this uh, working of the GPS receiver is based on the two things here. One is the satellite ranging. You are catching the signals from the satellite. So which are the locations of those satellites up into the uh, sky? What is the distance of the satellite to the user? And what is the why there is a need to uh, at least bisect or observe minimum four satellites in order to determine the position. So this is called the satellite ranging. The second component of that is the distance measurement. So radio signals are traveling from the uh, satellite to the receiver in our hand and uh, this will measure certain time factor and uh, then we will get the distance out of it. So these two things are there when um, we are working with some kind of a GPS unit. So, these GPS units are also working at a different frequencies. So, you can see that the uh, uh, they are working in the L band and uh, the spectrum is 1 between 1 and 2 gigahertz of the. So, if you look at the diagram that there is a L1 frequency in which these receivers are working, there is a L2 frequency and also some of the receivers now are working in the L5. Frequency. So, these are the frequencies in which the receivers are working. Uh, more the frequency in the receivers are working, costly the receiver is. If you look at the further bifurcation of the L1 and L2, which is the most popular uh, receivers, they are working in these two frequencies. Uh, L1 is 1575.42 megahertz while L2 is 1227.60 megahertz. So, this is the lower and this is slightly the higher value. Now, if we see the bifurcation, so L1 carrier uh, is giving us course acquisition code, the short form is C by A code. Then precise code, the P code, navigational messages. So, three uh, code, two codes and messages are there while L2 carrier is giving us the precision code and the navigational message. So, this is the kind of a further bifurcations. So, it depends whether we are working on a dual frequency GPS receiver or a single frequency GPS receiver. Accordingly, then it will give us the data in that particular code and signals. If we have L1 signals, if we have uh, a receiver which works in the single code, L1 will transmit a navigational message in course acquisition code, CA code. And this code is freely available to the normal public. So, one can have the uh, instrument, their unit and can have. The another one is the encrypted precision code called PY code. It has a restricted access it is transmitted on both L1 and L2 type of receivers. Now, when I say that it is giving you the navigational messages, what is the meaning of that? Navigational messages will have the following information. The GPS date and timing when you are working, the satellite status and the health the satellites uh, which are tracked and ephemeris data of the satellites. So, that is also very, very important and this allows receiver to calculate the position of the satellite. So, once we have the ephemeris data transmitted, we can get the position of the satellite. Then almanac data. So, almanac data contain the information and status of all GPS satellites like a star almanac, uh, we get the information about the stars. This PY code that is uh, used for military because this is a very precise code and it provides the better inference rejection than a CPI code. It gives the better precision in case of the coordinate systems. The new 
receivers which are there new GA satellites now transmit L2 in the L2 uh, signal also there is C by A code which is called L2C codes and publicly available to the civilian user. So, these codes are very very important when we are dealing with the computations part of the coordinates. So, we basically there are in broad P code and C A code we have to understand. The P code uh, is uh, working at a much much higher frequency 10.23 megahertz and it is giving us very very precise results. So, if my unit is working in that wavelength region and it will give me very precise positions of the if I have a high end mapping units with me, if I have like surveying unit or military units or high end units are there, they can receive more accurate P code and I can get very very accurate data. While the recreational type units are available which are less costlier, which are not that expensive and they only receive the data in chorus acquisition call. So, relative positions would be good, but absolute position may not be that good. So, this GPS basically how it is working we have to learn. So, it is generating the pseudo random code. This is called short form PRC, pseudo is the false. So, pseudo random code will be generated. It is a very complex signal, I will show you in my in the next slide. And it is a unique to each of the satellite. As I told you that there are 24 satellites. So, this code will be unique to each of the satellites and all the satellites are using the same frequency and this pseudo random code is economical to use compared to the others. So, here the each satellite as I told you that it will transmit to my receiver a unique signature which is assigned to it. And the signature will consist of very large number of zeros, 1023 zeros and 1, a combination of 0 and 1. And it will broadcast at the duration of the 1 millisecond so quick and continuously it is repeated. So, this pseudo random code uh, serves two purposes to my receiver. The unique signature pattern, it identifies the satellite from which the signal is ori originated. So, it will identify from which particular satellite uh, this signal has been generated. So, these satellites uh, are also coded. Then the signal travel time measurement. So, it will measure the travel time of that signal from the satellite to my receiver. So, you can see here the pseudo random code is given and in 1 millisecond so many pseudo random codes are developed and transmitted continuously. So, very large number in a short period of time. So, if I show you a blow up of that, so there is a satellite which is generating pseudo random code, there is a receiver which is generating the pseudo random code, they are communicating now with each other, the satellite is transmitting the data. So, now you can see a code at the top which is coming out from the satellite and the pseudo random code is generated by my receiver here. Yeah. So, what is happening is now I will find out the matching of the two where the these codes are matching and in this two vertical lines you know I have shown where uh, you know these starts the pattern starts matching with each other. So, I find out how much is that difference between the two that is my time difference. So, it will measure that particular time difference in order to calculate the distance, how far is the satellite from the receiver. So, distance to the satellite will be determined once we know this particular timing and how much time the satellite signal has taken to reach to the satellite. Now, to take the measurement but we are assuming that our satellite and receivers are generating the same pseudo random code exactly the same time. Okay. And what we are doing is we are comparing the two together as I have shown in the previous uh, slide and then we determine how long it has 
taken to reach to that. If we multiply that with the time, with the velocity of the light, because the radio wave is traveling with the velocity of the light, we can get the distance between the receiver and the satellite. So, this diagram shows that synchronization is important. Synchronization when the satellite uh, signal started transmitting and the, um, the receiver which is in my hand. So, immediately the, the uh, code is generated, random code is produced by my receiver also. So, GPS receiver generates the same pseudo random code as the satellite when they start counting at the same time. So, this is this is very very important and we have to determine by determining how far off the satellite and receivers are in their counting determines that difference in the timing it took signal to reach to the receiver. So, you can see in the diagram here also that these two codes are there one is generated by the satellite another is generated by the receiver itself. Now, accurate timing is very very important because each of these satellites are carrying four atomic clocks on the board. So, there are four atomic clocks which are carried by these satellites. Receivers do not have that expensive clock, okay, those atomic clocks with them. So, they do not have very very accurate clocks. So, what we do is we take the extra satellite range measurements so that we can get the accurate measurements. We can remove the error which is due to the generation of this pseudo random codes. So, uh, to use the satellite as the reference for the range measurements, we need to know the position. So, where the satellite is. So, GPS satellites are uh, very high up in the orbit and uh, they can be predicted, their positions can be predicted because all GPS receivers now have an almanac the data about the satellites and uh, using that almanac data at any moment the information which is transmitted along with the timing signals will help us to determine the position coordinate systems. So, as you can see here in this slide you know in the normal concept of the distance is there they there is a lightning during the rain times you know I determines the start time and year determines the stop time. So, I will see the first there is a lightning in the atmosphere and year will determine the stop time. So, travel time is now if we determine this this travel time we can get the distance travel time into the speed of the sound. So, similar concept now we are using here also there is a, a GPS satellite up in the sky, there is a GPS receiver in the on the earth with the user community and the GPS receiver will compute the distance to the satellite by using very very simple relationship. And these uh, the signals are received traveling from the satellite to the receiver part of this. So, uh, here we are talking of the pseudo range false range to the satellite. So, velocity of light into travel time plus receiver clock error plus other error could be there. So, we are not actually dependent on the signal from one single satellites. We are taking the signal from the several satellites so that we do not get that error. We do not get the receiver clock error and the other errors they are all eliminated. So, let us understand that concept here in this. So, this is a concept uh, of the distance uh, there is a car which is traveling on the road and there is a uh, time signal transmitter. So, this uh, transmitter will transmit the signal to the car and the car will receive it the signal because there is a GPS device fitted on it, there is a receiver fitted on it. So, this car will receive the signal and also the car is moving forward direction, it is not a static object. So, maybe uh, you know by the time the calculation has been done or the distance has been calculated d, the car has already moved a certain distance in a certain time interval. So, there is a time lag between the two. The signal which is transmitted and signal which is received then you can see that there is a 
time lag delta t time lag. So, we have to actually in order we have delta t time lag. So, we are bound to get a certain error in our computation purpose and we have to minimize that error. So, this you can understand now with the another figure much more clearly. So, we have one measurements. Now, if we have to minimize the error, maybe we are going to use the two signals, one signal and another signal and there is a GPS receiver here. So, we are getting these signals from the two satellites now. One satellite let us say up in the sky, the another satellite up in the sky. So, here now um, the time lag delta T1 and the time lag a delta T2 is there. So, we can actually now because the car has moved a certain distance, we will get the two values, we can take the average of that values. So, likewise, you know what we can do is that we can find out how much is the error due to the time lag. For example, um, there is an error of 300 meter if the timing is off by 1 microsecond. So, a small variation in the time, 1 microsecond will give me 300 meter error in my distance measurement. So, we have to consider this while we are working on this concept. Now, we have to determine the correct position where we are standing with the unit. So, in order to determine the correct position at least 4 satellites are required so that we can get the signals from these 4 satellites and get the range. So, you can see in this uh, slide here that uh, some unit is kept here and there are satellites which can be monitored from that particular location. So, we have here uh, 4 satellites visible that means uh, the unit is able to capture the signals from these 4 satellites and thus we can uh, have the accurate position without having the accurate clock in my receiver system. So, accuracy up to 5 to 10 meter accuracy can be achieved if we are uh, observing with more than one satellites and minimum four satellites are there. So, this is the principle of positioning that we have uh, four satellites and these four satellites are sending in the pseudo range uh, to the receiver systems and then I am actually minimizing that. So, I am determining the the accurate position of the point. So, I can get x, y and z very accurately which is required for the mapping purpose. This slide shows that um, how many satellites could be visible from a particular location. This, so, this is the animation because these satellites are continuously moving and this animation is showing you that uh, this is the number of the satellites which are visible to us from the position. The, the blue big dot is showing the position as we um, change the position the satellites are moving that number of satellites which could be visible. So, we have to wait for a while if suppose only two satellites are visible where we are standing we have to wait for a while because the satellites are continuously moving their consolation their orientation is changing. So, after just a small wait we can get more number of satellites. So, we have to uh, catch that location, we have to take the observation of that location where the number of satellites uh, are much more in number. So, that will give me very less error in my observations. So, when I am measuring actually the distance using this simple concept and a very very accurate clock which is uh, fit which is uh, carried by those uh, satellites and 1 upon 100 of the second will give me a distance error of 3000 kilometer. So, you can understand the accuracy of the clocks which are used in that. So, they have very very high accurate atomic clocks and receivers do not have that clock. So, we are taking that observations in order to get the best position. So, let us understand how we are getting the position which is uh, having very very less error which are more or less accurate in nature. So, if I am uh, looking at one satellite only, so I am catching the signals on the earth surface here from one satellite 
So then there is a possibility that my position is somewhere within the circle, okay? within that particular range, I may be somewhere there with one satellite if I try to. So my error in my observation may be quite large. If there are two satellites, so these are the two satellites. This is the zone of influence of the satellites. So when I am tracking these two satellites, I am catching the signal from the two satellites. The, what is the common zone? This is the common area between the two. So that means I am somewhere within this common zone. My location could be anywhere within this common area. So from that large area, my error zone has been reduced. So now uh, within that plane, I am somewhere lying, somewhere lying between these two. Now if I catch signal from the third satellite, so this is the third satellite. Now the common area between the three has reduced. So this is the common area. So you will see it is like it error of triangle is continuously reducing as the number of satellites are increasing. So if I have more and more number of satellite this error of triangle will further reduce and ultimately it will be uh, a point feature. So here now you can see in the uh, slide my location could be at two positions. So I could be here, I could be here within that region overlap region. So if I have multiple like that, you know very very large number of satellites are there, uh, then uh, this is the kind of a position you know I will get from those intersections. So these are the four satellites which are a, at a well angled well positions, then I can get the correct position of this. So the position calculation is uh, what is the satellite I am looking at the pseudo random code, what is the range from the satellite which is synchronized, the satellite position, the navigational messages which I am getting, the ephemeral data and within these information of from four satellites, the position of the receiver we can solve very easily. So uh, if you look at the performance of the different systems, uh, this is only the uh, the exemplary uh, slide, this gives we can get in the standard positioning system 100 meter horizontal accuracy, 156 meter vertical accuracy, it is designed for the civilian use and it is free signal. If we go to precise positioning mode, then the accuracy is better 22 meters, 27.7 meter vertical accuracy and it is designed for the military uses. Now how to select a good GPS receiver? It depends on my application, whether I am doing application for my mapping, surveying or it is for flying, boating or driving application, navigational application. So my how much accuracy is desired at the end will depend upon at uh, what is the size of my area and what uh, mapping scale is there. Then uh, how much is the power consumption requirement of that instrument? This is also very important when we are working in the field, it should work 8 to 10 hours continuously. What are the operational require environment? A very cold environment, very hot environment, we have to see that. Signal processing requirements also we have to check. We have to check the what is the cost of that and most importantly is the data exchange format because we sometimes we have to convert one uh, uh, data format into the another data format. So this software should be able to support that. This is all about the GPS. Thank you.